Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Fencing Flops. This week we're going to be taking a look at the episode On Guard from the show Modern Family. So let's just jump right in. Defense, I was like, sure, uncoordinated kid, lethal weapon. How can this go wrong? <laughs> Did you know that fencing goes back to the 12th century? I know you're not supposed to care, but it's kind of cool to have a kid in your house who's the best at something. You know what I mean? <laughs> How about a nice round of applause for our winner, Manny Delgado? Manny now moves on to the championship where he'll be competing against Caroline Markham. We'll see you all back here at 4.30. All right. ¡Bravo! ¡Ay, Dios mío, papito lindo! ¡Qué belleza! ¡Qué orgullo! La abuela va a estar dichosa. What she said. <laughs> so, that's probably a good place to stop for now. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot that we really saw. Most of it was just, you know, zooming in on the parents all around. But that's actually something that's kind of realistic. Pretty much every tournament you go to that has any kid below the age of, I think usually like 15 or 16, has a lot of parents in the audience. Fencing tournaments like this don't really gather a whole lot of attention, so most of the people there are just there to support their kids. So that's actually pretty realistic. The audience here is, it looks like it's pretty much just made up of the competing fencers and the parents of those fencers. And then one or two uh, family members who look like they don't really want to be there. That's all so pretty realistic. I've seen my fair share of uh, younger kids who were clearly siblings who don't take fencing, don't know what is going on, but they're forced to be there. The thing about this is, for the most part, I tend to stay away from bad-looking form because it's done by actors who haven't spent a whole lot of time fencing, just taken enough lessons to make it look like they know what they're doing. In this case, while I'm sure that that is also the case, they're also kids. So it actually kind of lines up because no kid, unless they, you know, started when they were as young as could possibly be, and even then, it takes uh, a little bit longer for a kid to sort of learn a lot of the basic moves and how to do them well, because they're just not uh, physically coordinated as much. So this kind of actually, it kind of evens out. Like, they have bad form, the kind of thing that you'd see a lot of actors with, but they also are kids, so it actually matches very well. There were a few things that I saw but most of it was very small. Like at one point, one of them had their blade held at more than a 90 degree angle from their arm, which is not what you want to do. Uh, they're fencing Epe, which is a thrust only weapon. So not only because of that, but also because the entire body is valid target area, your bell, which is the guard, is one of your main forms of defense. So the blade is held pretty much parallel to the floor, straight in front of your arm. Because your arm is, while it's small, it is the closest target to your opponent, so you want to be able to protect it. So having your blade bent up at an angle is uh, very bad. But again, it's, you know, they're kids. No matter how long they've been doing it, they can't possibly have been doing it enough that there isn't an element of just whacking your opponent with a metal stick. You know, they'll learn later on that that's not how you should approach fencing, but there's no way around it at this stage of their life. So, a lot of the mistakes that we're going to see in this episode are very forgivable because of that. One thing that I think was probably the most unrealistic thing was how much showmanship they're putting into this tournament. You know... It's a show. They're supposed to, you know, make things clear and, you know, really try to bring out the most that they can from this scene. 
but at a real tournament, there's not that much announcing or anything like that. They certainly don't, like, tell people come back at a later time. That's not what happens. The thing is, fencers in any weapon at any tournament, they do actually have a certain amount of time between bouts to rest up. And how much time they have depends on what tournament they're at and how far along they are in the tournament. But they're never given too much time. Because the problem is, if you rest too much, then you're no longer warmed up, and it actually becomes worse for you. So you never want to wait too long. So there's never a reason to send people away and say, come back at a later time when we have everything ready. You know, this is taking place at a fencing club. They have everything ready. They have strips set up. That's pretty much every club out there. It's so much easier. Because if you have a space that you own then why not have the strip open and available for use all the time? It just removes, you know, a couple extra steps. Because you don't have to set anything up, you don't have to take it down. So, you know, there's almost nothing to get ready for the next bout. So, sending people away and saying come back at another time, that, that never happens. While they do announce the next people who are going to be fencing in the next bout, especially if it's this late in the tournament... Uh, they don't, they usually don't do it with as much showmanship as they did here. But these were all small things, easily forgivable. So, so far, they're actually doing a fairly good job. And I have something for you. Here. I will not be needing it anymore. But the finals. I am retired. It's just not fun anymore. Well, it's probably just butterflies. Come on, you're going to be fine. I'm not nervous. I just don't want to fight a girl. What? Defeating a woman would be a mark on my honor. Why? Because men are always so superior to women? Uh... Uh, uh, if you don't compete with this girl, you're showing me and all the women that you don't respect us. I'm sorry. Okay. So take back your sword and go fight this girl like a bull. Okay. Can hear you. Okay. I can't hear you. That's really as loud as I can go. So I get that it's part of this kid's character to be like very dramatic and everything. So I don't think I really had to point out how ridiculous that is. But I have met a fair amount of people who think that fencing is not very athletic. It's something very easy to do. And somehow this leads them to the assumption that, uh, women fencing is not a real sport. Uh, I understand that there's a stereotype for uh, women sports athletics are also not considered nearly as good as, you know, the men's side of things. Now, I obviously don't believe that's true. And while there are plenty of tournaments in fencing that are separated by either age and or gender, there are plenty of women in fencing and a lot of them are extremely good. So this whole stereotype about women not being very good and also not wanting to fence someone because they're women, once they put on a mask, it's just a humanoid person. You don't care about any of that when you get onto the strip, and nor should you. So I get that it's something that, you know, he backtracked on, and it's supposed to be, like, just something for the show, but I didn't really like that they included it. But that's just my personal opinion. You stole my moment, Claire. Yeah, 21 years ago. Okay, no, but it doesn't matter to you because you had your own moments. You had cheerleading and high school plays and uh, making out with the quarterback. Oh, and... come on, you made out with him too. Yeah, but we had to keep it a secret. Stay focused, stay loose, and stay angry. Who's the toughest? I am. Who's the bravest? I am. Who's the baddest? Can you guys ask all the questions now so I don't have to keep lifting this? Go get them. I get that's a joke, and it is kind of funny, but fencers keep their masks removed, or at the very least up, before it starts. Because you have to salute your opponent, the ref, and the audience, and you have to do it with your mask up. Maybe I can pull the fire alarm. Expect no mercy. 
Bring it on, big boy. Put it away or lose it. Somebody's got to put a stop to this. So, that was a big example of foregoing the rules in favor of having a better show. That was 100% against the rules. Sportsmanship is taken very seriously in fencing. You are supposed to approach it with respect to your opponent. The way he turned, that could be perceived as a number of different offenses. Probably abnormal fencing. It could be seen as dishonest fencing, but um, I think a, only a really hard-ass ref would call it as such. But it's clearly a rude action that is meant to cause offense to the opponent. Now, I'm not sure if it actually would have resulted in him being carded or even given a warning or something like that. I think the thing that would have happened is they would have called halt for when he turned around because turning your back to the opponent is not only something that the ref is supposed to stop the action for, the first time it happens it results in a yellow card, which is a warning. Depending on the ref, he may have gotten an additional penalty, which would probably result in a red card, which would be a touch for his opponent. But it really depends. It could be interpreted a number of different ways. And the thing is, this is also a youth tournament. I don't know how old he is in the show, but he can't be much older than 12. So while they want you to, you know, follow the rules of fencing, I think that something like that, his action that could be interpreted as either something very light or something that is, you know, not very sportsmanlike conduct, could be taken a number of different ways, and as a result, they probably would make an exception for him. Now, I don't mean make an exception for what he did. I mean, they wouldn't punish him very harshly for it. Whereas if he was older and he did that, they probably would have just jumped down his neck for it, because that is unacceptable. But that's in terms of the fact that he clearly was antagonizing his opponent. He definitely would have been carded for turning his back, because no matter what the intention was behind it, it was an incontestable fact that it happened. So that was the main thing that was wrong with this scene. The other thing is the whistle. Uh, whistles are not used. You are supposed to listen for the ref. The ref has three commands. On guard, ready, fence. In a previous video, I explained the importance of these, but I'll go over them again briefly. On guard, you're supposed to be at the on guard lines, ready to go. You don't necessarily have to have your arm all the way, so you can be like 90% on form, but you are supposed to be at the lines pretty much ready to go. When the ref says ready, you are then supposed to be 100% on guard and you do not move. Once the ref says fence is when you go. So fencers depend very heavily on hearing that order and responding to that order of calls in the proper way. So a whistle is never used. Basically anything that can be used as a single sound confirmation to begin fencing is not used. However, the actual fencing taking place, we don't see very much of it. It's mostly just of the main character in this episode attacking. But from what little we do see, it actually looks pretty good. His lunges and his overall movements actually look very nice. Considering how old he is, at least. Again, no matter how long you've been doing it, at certain ages, there's a bar that just is never really gone above. I don't care how much of a prodigy you are, you just have to get used to the movements. And it always takes people at least a certain amount of time to overcome. But considering how old he is, he actually has form that is, at least from what I can tell, more or less on par with a lot of actual fencers his age. Not every single one of them. There is always, you know, a diamond in the rough that you know, excels above the others, but that's going to be true in every aspect of life. So, for the most part, it was actually pretty nice form. Let's go. 
get out of here. I'll get this thing in the trunk. I can't decide if I'm feeling more proud or mortified. So this is a small thing, but I don't know of any fencer who keeps the, their full equipment on after a tournament. This was set up a little weird because the entire tournament wasn't completed in a day, which I don't think I've ever seen, especially not at a local level like this. But I guarantee if this had actually happened, you would want to take that stuff off, especially on a hot day like that. I mean, you know, even if they have stellar air conditioning, as soon as you step outside, the rest of that sweat, you know, it, you just want to get all that off. Yeah, that's pretty unusual. Fencing, despite a lot of people's preconceived notions about it, is actually very aerobic, and you can really work up a sweat. Even if you're just doing drills and stuff that don't require the full set of gear, uh, you really have to move a lot. Guilt fades. Hardware is forever. That size of trophy is unrealistic. I haven't seen every single trophy that they whip up for youth competitions for really any sport, but that doesn't really happen. In fact, trophies are usually only given out at really big tournaments. For the most part, in fencing, you earn medals. But other than that, uh, that's the end of the scene. There were a few things that they got wrong, but it was actually not bad. Now, like I said before, this is partially because we don't actually see a whole lot of fencing, but the little bit of fencing that we did see was actually done fairly well. No offense to any Epe fencers watching this, but Epe is usually easier to uh, showcase. I think they got away with a little more leeway because of that, but still, it's a lot of the forms are very similar if not exactly the same as done in the other two weapons. So it was still pretty impressive that they did enough research and practice to actually get it looking this close to a real bout. And like I said, this was all at youth tournaments and stuff, so the safety net was a little bit wider by default. But still, they did a pretty good job. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.